Welcome back to a Frankfurt Book Fair, ladies and gentlemen. In the name of the Federation of European Publishers, I welcome you. I'm Peter Korsam Kleff. I'm the president of the Federation of European Publishers, and we are the voice of European publishing and publishers. This means that we, we are um, an umbrella organization uh, combining 29 members from 27 different states, plus guest, our guest member, Ukraine. And you know, books and words and writing and, and distributing words means everything to European publishers. Also, when we look at our uh, colleagues from book selling uh, industry or from the authors and translators, but I mean, right after books, since I'm, I'm a, um, I studied economics, right after books and the words comes facts and figures. Because for advocating uh, in Brussels for our interests and for, for um, taking care of explaining what our industry means to, to, um, to the economy in Europe and also to the culture in Europe and this unique combination of being culturally important as well as uh, economically, we need facts and figures to furnish proof of how many people are working in the industry, how did we perform, how did we get through the pandemics, how are we coping with current energy prices and so on. And this is a really, really thoroughly um, business. And I'm really, really glad and uh, thankful we have our deputy uh, director, Enrico Turin, who is in charge of uh, not only collecting all the stats, but in interpreting that. And I thank uh, Enrico for preparing today's meeting and for giving you an insight on how is the European publishing industry doing, how did we perform also during the pandemic. And I also thank every uh, member uh, from our organization contributing to these stats because you will see some slides where we, we see some, still some white marks in the landscape. And this shall also motivate everyone to contribute to uh, gathering statistics because we should be aware that publishing is one of the core European cornerstones of, uh, of the entire European eco economic um, while as when we look at the platforms, they're either American or more, uh, becoming more important Chinese. So we always um, underline that publishing is not only culturally important for Europe, but also economically. And that is uh, why we're here to show you some statistics. And I'm happy to give the floor to uh, Dear Enrico Turin, Deputy Director of FEP, to give you more insights into that. And thanks for your interest. and. And one thing, and thank you, talking about Ukraine, um, I heartily invite you to join us tomorrow at the um, um, Room Harmony, that's also where the opening ceremony takes place, because at 12.30 we'll be doing a, a special FEP rendezvous this year to show us solidarity for Ukraine and to stand in for Ukraine. We'll be having speakers and accept, uh, expecting a video um, message from President Zelensky. And uh, please join us and show your solidarity with our colleagues in Ukraine and help us supporting them to uh, refurbish their industry and to translate as many books from Ukrainian language into your respective language. So please feel free to come 12.30 tomorrow at Saal Harmonie. And now, the Enrico, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Thanks, everyone. Welcome. Uh, sorry, which one is? Well, the one with the arrow, obviously. Again, welcome. Uh, we're going to uh, look today at the data on the European book market for 2021. And of course, we also uh, will take a glimpse of what's going on in 2022, because by now it's October. And I guess you're all curious to know how things are going this year. As well, we collect our data mainly through questionnaires that we uh, collect from our members, the 29 national associations of publishers that Peter was talking about. So uh, what you'll see here is an elaboration based on the information we receive from all the national uh, publisher associations. I'd like to make a small recommendation. We, uh, rather than focusing on the specific data points, because I made them up anyway, Look at the story that is behind the data, the story that it tells us, the story that it tells us, especially in what happened in the last two years, which have been, obviously, no need to say why, extraordinary in many respects. So, first thing, 2021, thankfully, was an exceptional year 
regarding book sales, and in particular here you see publishers turnover reached 23.6 billion euros, so that is net publishers turnover. More or less 6.5% higher than in 2020, which is the highest single year increase that we have seen in about 15 years. As you can see, 2020 was not, after all, in terms of publishers to know, that bad. We calculated minus 1%, give or take, with big differences between countries, between segments, between trade channels, and we see more about that, but it wasn't too, too bad. And 2021, maybe one silver lining of the pandemic, people had more time to read, people rediscovered the pleasure of reading, but very, very good year for book sales, those 23.6 billion in net turnover, and this is a very important distinction, correspond to some 37, 38 billion sales at cover price. There's a big difference because when you then look at individual country uh, data, sometimes you, you, you see net publishing turnover, sometimes you see market value, you need to be able to make the difference, otherwise uh, you can mix up things. So, turnover up, at the same time, but maybe it's not necessarily bad news, num total number of titles going slightly down. We see from uh, well, a peak five years ago of 610,000 new titles, different new titles in all languages. Published in 2017, there was a bit down and up, and then the pandemic obviously uh, made it so that, unfortunately, a number of titles could not appear, but at the same time, it could be also a sign of a sort of an attempt of rationalization. And anyway, more turnover and fewer titles means, on, broadly speaking, better doing titles in terms of sales. So last year, about 575,000 different new titles. For an active catalog, that is, how many books are available for sale in Europe of more than 13 million right now? So don't worry, you'll, you'll never be left without something to read. And three million of them, if that's your cup of tea, are available in digital. So however you want to read, whatever you want to read, don't worry, you'll find something. Uh, by broad categories, uh, we, we make the distinction, really, really very broad categories, uh, from bottom to top, education, that's K-12, academic and professional books, then what we call trade books, so pretty much everything you find in a, book in a regular bookstore, and children's books. Now, of course, uh, educational books, uh, more, most, most of all, are affected by the cycles of adoptions in countries, so that's, uh, the, the up and down doesn't tell us that much. What I'd like to uh, point out as, is the resilience of children's books, which by now represent 15% of turnover. Children's books in particular, we like to think, have been recognized as a value by the parents, a safe, a secure value, in particular during the... I'm pressing this thing randomly. Uh, by parents in particular, so children's books especially have been doing very well, more, even more than before during, during the pandemic. Uh, I'm really fighting with this thing. Uh, a sector that exports, uh, a lot, of course, mainly along uh, homogeneous language areas. Uh, we're talking about uh, a little more than 18% of turnover coming from exports. Uh, uh, it seems that the pandemic affected a bit, well, it affected trade in general, it affected book exports a bit, but anyway, the share remains of exports remains significant. And, uh, well, no surprises here. Uh, for the last three years, we've been able to also look at uh, different distribution channels. And we see, in particular, sales in bookstores. So this is, let's say, the first sort of bit of bad news for, the, for now, because sales in... I didn't press, I swear, I didn't press anything. Uh, now I did. And now I did. The sales in bookstores were more than 50% in 2019. There were close to 45% in 2020, so obviously the pandemic affected in particular bookstores. And the descent slowed down, but still 2021, a little below in terms of the share of bookstores, 43, for, between 43 and 44%. And obviously, 
the main winner in this situation are online sales, 23% in 2019. They're pushing almost 30% in 2021. Print books still get the main share of uh, sales. Uh, it might be surprising for you. It's not really for us. People like reading in print. There's nothing wrong with that. So, poltergeist. So, eight, close to 85% of turnover comes from print books. We have um, with more than 12% coming from e-books, but very important, Audiobooks are now in the picture, and that's going to keep increasing for the next foreseeable future a lot. 2.5% now, and it's probably an underestimate, uh, but keep an eye on audiobooks. That's going to, that's going to keep, keep going up for the, for, the, for the next years. Main markets in terms of domestic sales, Germany, UK, France, Italy, Spain, and the Netherlands, and as titles, more or less the same, but with the UK, obviously, with the uh, uh, largest uh, language spoken in the world. So UK, then Germany, Spain, Italy, France, and Poland. These are the countries with the main titles. And now, the part I like the most, the maps. I hope, I hope well, first of all, I hope they come. I hope none of you are, is colorblind, because I have this thing that I use green and red. So if, if you're colorblind, my apologies. This is the market in 2021 compared to 2020. So again, we have an increase of 6.5% of total turnover. So where possible, unless indicated by an asterisk, this is the whole market in a country. And you see that uh, 2021 indeed was a good year, or a very good year, for book sales from an increase of 18% in Poland, more than 15% in Portugal. But Okay, for example, Portugal was hit among the hardest in 2020, so it's, uh, it's justifiable that the increase is so, so relevant. But every other country did pretty well. The Nordics, which, who did very well even in 2020, still going on strong in 2021. Italy, France, Spain, not bad. Uh, a word of explanation about Ireland. The positive figure is for book sales, the negative figure is for book sales from Irish publishers, because when people moved massively to buy online, they bought from platforms that were not based in Ireland. So more book sales, but not, but, but not more uh, turnover for the Irish publishers. Not uh, great growth, but, but still some growth for the central countries, uh, Netherlands, Germany, and Austria. Now, same story, but this is just print, book sales, you see a more nuanced picture, growth, although uh, not as big in most cases as with uh, the overall market. But you see also uh, a number of countries in which ebook sales went down because many, maybe many people moved to digital during the pandemic and then went back to print, although in part this is also explained because it is difficult very difficult, actually, to capture sales that go through subscription models. So again, don't take that at face value. It's possible that we're just seeing a shift from unit sales to, uh, sub to a subscription model. Audiobooks going strong, uh, especially in countries like Finland, Italy, uh, well, growth in the double digits. And then, as I was saying, the picture gets, might get, will get, should get even more mixed uh, when we look at sales through bookshops. And here, 2021 was not so good. In those countries where overall growth was a bit weaker, Netherlands, Germany, Austria, book sales uh, in bookshops uh, were lower in 2021 than in 2020, and again, 2020 was very hard on bookstores. But of course you'll say, look, wh whatever happened uh, to the last normal year, 2019, because that's what we really want to know, how did 2021 perform compared to 2019? Well, well, it's also the, the answer, it did well. Uh, 
2021 versus 2019, growth all over the place again. This is, again, good news, because 2019, as we keep saying, was the last normal year. 2021 was even better than the last normal year. Look at the Nordics, fantastic book sales there, but also, again, Italy, France, Belgium, Spain, not too bad. And again, Germany, Austria, Netherlands, just above, let's say, the, the zero mark, or well, a, a little above the zero mark. And because it went straight to this, and I'm fed up, I'll go straight to sales in bookshops. Here is, uh, no, this is backwards. I'm going forward. Print book sales, 2021, compared to 2019, good, but again, Good, but again, mixed picture. So, no, there's no, it's, it's me or, or, the, or the machine. Print book sales, 2021 versus 2019. Uh, more mixed picture, uh, growth in majority of territories, but in a few countries, you see the, the, the growth was actually driven by digital, mainly. And last bit of, uh, and here, it um, and here really we we have to speak about bad news sales in bookshops 2021 versus the last normal year and here basically sales in bookstores have not recovered to the level of before the pandemic, basically anywhere, and the thing already went ahead, I'll be damned. Uh, well, anyway, what I was saying is that books, sales in bookstores have not recovered to the level of, 2000, of 2019. I'm not... So I'm not doing anything now, let's see. Sales, I'll say it for the last time, and then we move to 2022. Sa I'm not moving. Sales in bookshops in 2021 have not recovered to the pre-pandemic level. And that, as I said, is bad news because as publishers, we recognize that we need a healthy network of independent bookstores to be the basis of a healthy overall See, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I, I swear, I didn't touch it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should put it down. So um, we need a healthy uh, network of independent bookstores to underpin uh, the book sector in general. How are things doing in 2022? Because the slide couldn't wait to tell you. Uh, here, well, you see we have information sometimes for the very few first months of the year, uh, sometimes up to August or, or even September. And the picture, again, is mixed. We have countries that are still going strong, Norway, Iceland, Finland, uh, the UK. Now, of course, you have to, again, know what's behind. Plus 43% of Portugal up to March, but the year before, bookstores were closed. There was a lockdown in Portugal. So obviously, with books of open, you have bigger sales. The, end resu the, the result of the end of the year will, unfortunately, be nowhere near plus 40%. So of, of course, you always wonder what's behind the figures, even when you doubt already the figures, but also doubt, at least think of what's, what's behind. Uh, other case, well, France minus 5%, but our French colleagues were saying they're happy about that minus 5% because sales were so good the previous year that altogether you can be happy if this year ends 5% below last year. Uh, Italy, which started um, uh, half, half, halfway through the year, we're 5% below, they're catching up. Now it's not even 2% at uh, a month ago, say, uh, books, uh, yeah, book turnover was not even 2% below last year, so it's going, it looks like it's going to be a good year again. Germany, by July, minus 1%. The problem, again, in Germany, growth was not so strong in the, in the year before, so 
I think publishers were hoping for a, a bit better. Whereas in Sweden, again, minus 2% wouldn't be a tragedy com considered that the last two years were really uh, extraordinary. Where I hope there is, again, well, print sales, uh, same story, mixed picture. In some cases, uh, the, the growth is driven by print. In some cases, you see it's driven more by, by digital sales. But again, don't look too much. Data about digital is really hard to come by, and you shouldn't trust me or anyone else when they talk about that. And finally, where I hope there is, first of all, where I hope there is a, a slide. And it went back. It bounced. Bounced. Here is where I, th I hope uh, there's a, uh, the seed of uh, good news coming. Sales in bookshops this year seem finally to be picking up speed. We'll see at the end of the year. We'll see when we compare to the last normal. We'll see when we compare it with the last normal year. But uh, in most of the countries where we have information, sales in bookshops are recovering, and at the same time, you see online sales are going down. Are finally our customers going back to physical bookshops? Well, we hope so. At least there are some signs that this might be the case. We'll, we will let you know in a few months whether this turned out to be actually the case, but this is, uh, this is what we hope. And then I couldn't conclude, and then there'll be a good three minutes for questions, but I can't talk about figures in our sectors without saying a word about the paper crisis and the slides crisis. So, well, the slide only says paper crisis, so I said it. Paper crisis, I think if you are in publishing, abracadabra, if you are in publishing, you, you can't have missed the fact that we are undergoing one of the biggest cri well, crises, again, you know, it's not a war, it's not, but economically speaking, with a perfect storm of uh, a resurgent demand, bottlenecks in supply, a uh, surge in uh, uh, energy costs, paper, uh, so uh, paper production capacity having been uh, deviated to cardboard boxes for Amazon. So basically, there's no paper, and the little paper that you can find costs a lot. We have not yet seen the full impact on the market, but I'm afraid it's coming. There's no going around. Unless things change dramatically very soon, I'm afraid that sooner than later we will see the impact of this on the market. On this Note, I'm not so, not so nice. I stop, and we have a good two minutes for questions. It doesn't matter, you should say questions, whatever it says. Now is the time for questions, but first of all, thanks a lot for your attention. So, yeah. Really, if, whatever it says, if you have any questions, uh, we have about two minutes. Oh, sorry. people coming in or just uh, uh, or could you figure out the uh, the online uh, revenues as well all together it's difficult to tell so actually uh, online sales also in most cases include online sales by like our friends the bookstores so uh, it's like it's not 
all bad news if sales move, uh, move online. The one thing we know is that sales in bookstores are from the, the independent bookshops. Online sales, there's a bit of uh, platforms and a bit of, uh, of independent bookstores. So yeah, there's also that component. It's not, uh, it's not easy to tell them apart uh, in the consolidated data. Okay. Well, I think this is it. Anyway, uh, you can always find us, uh, Federation of European Publishers. My contacts are on the website. We, we also publish our statistics on the website regularly. Thanks again, uh, and uh, thanks also for the patience, uh, and thanks to me also for the patience with the thing. <laughs> Bye, have a nice fair.